Welcome back to another installment of Julian's Random Projects. Uh, today on the bench, the healing bench here, we have one of these uh, more modern transceivers, uh, ham radios. This one's a Yaesu FTDX10. It's a smaller version. I think we have a DX101. It's like a more feature rich version. You know, kind of looks like that. It's got the cool guy uh, screen on it and all that jazz. So this one, let me see if I can get it in frame here. I'm trying to do more of these uh, quick and dirty type videos because the, the video production that you guys are accustomed to on the channel takes time. And so I'm trying to get some of these things out as I think that you find some interest in them. Uh, but you know, with less uh, transitions and cool guy music and that kind of thing. So um, <laughs> here we are. So I bought this yesterday on the internets uh, locally picked up one of the uh, Craigslisty Facebook marketplace etc cetera, etc cetera. and I'm familiar with the the model number and what Yesu is doing here um, you know because I've looked at these and you guys saw in a previous episode uh, we got to play around with a software defined radio and this is a hybrid software defined so it's got uh, super heterodyne components discrete components to help filter stuff down and then it uh goes to sdr or it's the other way around i think it i think it's estradine first um and then what's left of that audio signal that gets routed into a computer and in this case an fpga a field programmable gate array and that does all the thinking for it uh, very smart of them to use an fpga because they decided that they really goofed and they wanted to reprogram it in some way that does something radically different at the chipset level, uh, they can do that with this radio, not just like moving the, a button around or coloring in the, or you know, the color of a button. That's not what we're talking about, but like how signals are actually routed through the processor can be changed where your Intel or your M1 processor that you've got on your Apple, uh, that one is baked. It is burned in and sealed. You cannot change it. This one could be changed if uh, Yesu decided or some uh, you know industrious open source person decided to change uh, the way this thing operates completely at like a, a metal level. <laughs> and so uh, very versatile, potentially some future proofing with this uh, if it becomes end of life by Yesu and somebody picks it up. So I got this thing probably for a tenth of what it goes for, and that is because it's broken. It doesn't work. Um, it was the victim of a lightning strike. And so let me show you what it does do. There we go. So that's promising. I, I, I knew that if the display came on, worst case, uh, I, I could come in here and salvage some parts or the next time uh, one of these comes in for repair, I'd have something to compare it to or pull parts from. Uh, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but like my radio hobby has turned into a small business <laughs> on the side. So I've been doing repairs for folks, uh, fixed a couple of amps and uh, some CB radios. I'm trying to steer away from CB radios and focus more on things that have LCD screens. Um, so less of like your, your granddad's old radio from the 80s and more the new hotness with the SDRs and things. So a lot of surface mount components and multi-layer board repair that's needed with these kind of things. So that's what I'm trying to specialize in. So it comes here, it does nothing. If it tries to load the firmware, which I've, I've correctly formatted an SD card and put Yesu's firmware on here, it just fails. So this is, this is all it'll ever do. Oh, there you go, reboots. So um, I've already gone around and used the uh, cheating method, uh, kind of an Ohm Ranger type thing. <laughs> like when there's a problem it, and something like this, a lot of times it, manifests itself in heat or and if, if there's not a, a part that's shorted to ground or you know a capacitor that's that's gone bad when those short voltage tries to find the the path of least resistance which is to ground and so those parts get hot they turn into little heaters so this can be a nice uh, tool to find that if you don't have any hot spots what you can do is you can start tracing voltages that you expect like you can find the 12 volts that comes in and you can start probing looking at the schematic God bless Yesu, uh, they published the schematics for this thing and also exploded views of it because I think they know their audience. They, these are going to uh, very technical minded consumers uh, that have taken tests uh, to be able to certify that they know how to use these things uh, properly. So I don't think they're too worried about somebody reverse engineering this and selling it. Uh, a lot of the, the intellectual property is in the software and how they control all these discrete components. Uh, and SDRs, you can get those for 20 bucks on Amazon. So uh, if you're interested in this stuff, you know, 
when this video is over, go find an SDR dongle and go to town. So sometimes you'll be coming through looking for it and it's you've got 12 volts and then, oh, this is a power supply. It's supposed to go down to five volts and then, oh, it's zero volts. Well, there you go. It's like, everything was good, now it's bad. The only thing in between when things were good and bad is a few components. You, you, you wanna start there with your troubleshooting and, and start replacing stuff. So, um, and in my case, I, I found a voltage regulator. Let me flip this guy over. Everything from here on out is gonna be upside down <laughs> uh, for you guys. So, um, over here in the corner, there's a voltage regulator that drops the 12 volts down to 3.3. And 3.3 is very common for small integrated circuits, uh, sensitive uh, electronics and things. So um, it makes sense that this thing didn't find a, an OS or you know, an operating system or any kind of uh, firmware to boot. And so it's asking you to install it. My guess is that it's, there's like the screen has its own processor. Obviously it shows, it's showing, um, pixels and text and then the screen interfaces with another um fpga or some other processor that that boots up with the actual operating system and the logic for making this a radio so if our 3.3 voltage regulator which i've deduced is bad um can't provide that three volts then it never boots up and this thing is just waiting to talk to something that's never going to talk to uh you know come alive and talk to it so <laughs> I searched around DigiKey, Mauser, they both have that part uh, with a minimum order of, uh, I think, 3,000 units. <laughs> so uh, even at, like the parts like a 30 cent part. And so it in, still ends up being, you know, $1,000 to to order the part for that. So it's not economical. Um, and it's not a common enough part that pops that I found a bunch of them on um eBay or something like that. You would start to find common uh, parts like that if some flaw in the way this was designed that popped often and all the users were constantly looking for it, there'd be some industrious guy that would go pay the thousand bucks and start selling the 30 cent part for five or $10 as a parts repair for the Yesu. And you know, that's, that's his business. So um, that just doesn't exist. In this case, it was a lightning strike that the operator uh, anticipated a storm and so in addition to their normal lightning suppression they went and disconnected the coax and the power from the back of this thing right so you know good on them smart did not disconnect the usb port for doing their ft8 uh fun with the computer so lightning strike comes in through the guy's home as pc finds a path to ground again it wants to find that sh the path of least resistance one of its paths that was through or you know, it was searching for uh, was through that USB cable, and it found our 3.3 uh, volt regulator and popped it. So, if I'm correct, applying three volts—that's why I brought you guys in here today to so see my my successes or failures here. <laughs> uh, more likely successes. I'm not uh, uploading a lot of failures unless I'm stumped and I need your help. Um, so I've put some little pigtails on here. So we have, um, where'd my ground go? Here we go. So without this thing, hopefully not shorting out on us. There we go, I'm off screen, I'm checking over here to see that my power supply, which I have set to 3.3 volts. There's our 3.3 volts. I think I should be able to inject it directly in. I looked at the schematic, kind of makes sense to me. Um, I pulled out some other supporting circuitry uh, that I don't think is needed if we're injecting. So here we go. All right, like that. Isu. Oh boy. <laughs> oh, really fun. Oop. Guys, I think we're in. I think we're in like Flynn. Oh yeah, cool. Turn it down. All right, so next thing to do is gonna be find an equivalent uh, voltage regulator, um, or I've also considered temporarily, uh, of course we all know how long temporary can be. Um, I, I have some of these very robust and uh, probably a lot more amperage, this thing's pulling uh, two amps on that three volt rail. 
Um, that's about right for running a little FPGA or a computer. I don't see anything else getting hot, too hot. Okay. Um, so I might just wrap this thing in Kapton tape and uh, tuck it into the corner there uh, and use it on my own. Now, if I, if I go to sell the thing, then I'm going to have to install the proper replacement part. But just for using around here in the shop, I think I might be uh, playing with this thing in the coming weeks with just a temporary fix, maybe while I get something on order. There we have it. A, uh, you know, 1500 $2,000 radio picked up for a whole lot less just because we were willing to get in there and see what we see. Oh, and some bonus footage at the end here. It's pretty obvious a previous repair attempt has been made. Uh, I found quite a few of these screws that were uh, cross-threaded as it was reinstalled. And that's very indicative um, that and like you know, maybe different connectors like this guy, you know, not being seated properly, that kind of a thing. So somebody came around and uh, uh, nosed around, maybe did the sniff test, tried to figure out what was uh, blown on it. So it's always good to know if someone's been in before you. <laughs> Ladies, if you enjoyed following along here and you think you might find some value in the future, make sure you subscribe. Otherwise, you might not ever see me again on YouTube. And if you're interested in picking up some of the stuff, I'll put some links down, uh, some shill links down there for uh, Amazon links. So maybe uh, for the thermal camera and uh, just so you can take out some of the, take a look at some of the specs. I will put a link down for the Yesu if it's on Amazon. Folks, appreciate it. Thanks for joining Julian's Random Projects. I'm hanging in, there ain't no doubt. And I'm hanging tough, over and out, over and out.